figure this way is this Kevin. Okay. Th thanks, Stefan. So, um, hang on, mind you, a little bit where we left off yesterday. Ah, uh, you need extra powerful hearing aids for me, so. So I'll give a definition of a classical field theory. As a sheaf of DGLAs, quasi-isomorphism, you know, with some invariant pairing, which is like this. And we defined supersymmetry. We just briefly write down the, the key, com key object in our uh, discussion of supersymmetry was the n equals 1 super translation Lie algebra. So this is so a complex z over 2 graded. Um, Lie algebra, where the Lie bracket So S plus and S minus are the two irreducible spin representations of spin 4. And the Lie bracket is given from the map, the isomorphism gamma from S plus tensor S minus to the vector representation, which is S spin 4. And um, what we said was that a supersymmetric field theory on R4 is one which is where the, it's acted on by the group R4, also by spin 4. And at the Lie algebra level, that action is extended to this super Lie algebra. OK. A double bar on the T means the tensor algebra. Double bar on the T. Where is that? The shift is parity change on the right. Ah, yeah, parity change. So these, these are odd. Oh, this is the odd. Yeah. And then, so the Lie bracket is. If and their commutator. Okay, so. So this is the case of n equals 1 supersymmetry. So let me briefly say how this generalizes to more supersymmetry. And it's a very similar picture. Suppose if we take some complex vector space. Um, then we can form a larger super translation Lie algebra. By tensoring S plus with W and S minus with W star. And the Lie bracket is the obvious one. It's just given by using the pairing between W and W star and the map gamma we write down over here. So the dimension of W is equal to the number of supersymmetries. So when physicists talk about a field theory with n equals 2 supersymmetry, for example, they'll have something acted on by this C over 2 graded Lie algebra, where W is C2. Okay. So. 
always confused. Sometimes it's number to the power of two, and sometimes it's the exponent of the power of two. Exactly. So what? Which one is? I think the more standard notation these days is it's like this is two-dimensional, so it's like the exponent. So it's like the number of irreducible spin representations, or something like that. The notation is incredibly confusing. <laughs> so I, I, so I still haven't. I know the convention in dimension four, but I would have trouble getting the right convention in, in other dimensions. Um, so note that the group GLW acts on this Lie algebra. Of course, as does. So this group is called the OR symmetry group. I've got a clue. I don't know. Does Sergey here? Well, I okay. <laughs> Did he ask what R was for? Yeah. Is that someone's name, for example, Raymond? No idea. No, no, it's not the name, but I have no idea. Um. They always talk about these Raymond sectors. Yeah, Raymond, Raymond, whatever. Maybe no shorts. Idea what any of it yeah, <laughs> I'm still having trouble with that part. <laughs> uh, OK, so well, more generally, you might have some subgroup of GLW which acts in your theory, which people might also call the or symmetry group. Um, where are we going? So, so if I take some subgroup, then a theory has or symmetry group G or if um, say of course a supersymmetric theory if it's acted on <coughs> by G or but of course in a way compatible with the action of this Lie algebra which we know we have. As you can see, this, this, all this stuff about definition of what, what a supersymmetric field theory is, you don't really need to know what a field theory is to talk about it. It's just some general thing about groups acting on R4. Okay, so what I'd like to, to talk about um, is the next topic is, is twisting. So you've probably heard people talk about topological twists of supersymmetric gauge theory and so on. So I want to explain how that general story goes, and then I'll tell you what you get once you twist. So we don't have the sheaf of Lie algebra yet, do we? Or is it um, construction or something? Well, um, so there is something called n equals 1 or supersymmetric gauge theory, which gives you a sheaf of Lie algebras in R4, okay. but it's, it's unfortunately really complicated. So it'll become much easier after I twist it, and then I'll tell you what it is. You're twist it and then explain it. Exactly. Okay. So. Thank so. You for doing that. So the idea is the following. So choose some Q in. We're something we don't know what it is yet. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's again just some general algebraic construction. Choose an element of the odd part of our supersymmetry Lie algebra with q brackets q is equal to zero. Is that, is that second w to w? Yes, thank you. Am I supposed to be thinking about T W as like symmetry of the space time or the 
yeah, you, you should, you can think of this as, as like vector fields on some superspace, if you like. Um, well, what's going to happen is that the supersymmetric field theories will be built from G bundles and R4 with extra data, some spinners and stuff like that. And there's just some way to write down an action of this Lie algebra. Okay. So everybody's odd in there. Yeah, exactly. This is the whole odd space, and we require that it brackets with itself to zero. So, so suppose. We have a supersymmetric field theory. It's given by a chief of Lie algebras, L. This means a classical yeah. field theory in the sense of that definition up there. Exactly. Okay. So a chief of DG Lie algebras. Although we can make this definition in the quantum case too, as you'll see, it's just some something cohomological, but for concreteness. Oh, you're saying it right now, sorry. Yeah. Um, then Q maps L to L. And because we assume when we say it's a supersymmetric field theory, it's acted on by this Lie algebra. This Lie algebra must preserve all structure. So in particular, must commute with the differential. And Q differential on L equals zero. And Q is a Lie algebra derivation. So I mean the sentence that you've kind of tacitly said, but I didn't write. So uh, this first thing has to be acted on by this algebra, that's what you mean to have symmetry. Exactly, yes. Um, so now we, we see we get a derivation of this Lie algebra, which is odd, satisfies q brackets q equals 0. So now we know what to do with that. We are familiar with deformation theory. So this is a solution of some Mark Artan equation, which allows us to deform the Lie algebra. So then we can try to form a deformation of L into a new TGLA with differential just D plus Q, differential L plus Q. And these properties tell us that this, this still squares is to 0. However, um, it's not really a, a kosher object of, of this world, because the differential is not of cohomological degree 1. So, so Q is of cohomological degree 0. But remember, everything is z, has z cross z over 2 graded. So but in the other grading, it's of degree 1. So fermionic degree. So this doesn't quite work. So what we'd like to so what we have to do instead. Does that make sense? Can't read that when you just wrote that last thing there. Oh, that this this other degree, from Yonic degree, is a, a Z over two grading. Just repeating what you just said? Yeah. Um so there, there's a, a solution to this, which is requires a few lines, so that's why I said this. this Wait, so why you say but? What's yes. Wrong with it now? Oh, it's the differential. It's it's odd, but.
but it's not of cohomological degree one, because everything is. So. It seems wrong. <laughs> I know I don't like it either, but I don't know why I don't like it. Well, I I, I like z over I like z graded things. So if you take the cohomology, it won't be z graded. No. Okay. So for the solution, we actually need a little more data. So that definition, uh, twisting data. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you apply this differential, it doesn't give you anything interesting, or oh, uh, it it it, it does. does. So as uh, Ewan was asking. Um, he said the n equals 1 theory is difficult to write down before we twist. Then is it simpler once we apply this differential? And the answer is yes, but it'll be even simpler once I do this construction. Because <laughs> once I do this, cons the correct construction, it'll be z graded and something very familiar. It'll just be the Dolbo complex. So twisting data. This is the definition of twisting? Yes, twisting data is pair Q just as above. <coughs> and, a, and a homomorphism to, from C star to this or symmetry group. such that Q is of degree 1. Okay, so we can think of this as an action of, ah, can you not see or not hear over there, or neither? This eye works better than this eye. Uh, this ear works better than this ear. <laughs> so we simply have a, recall that this is inside GLW, which acts on our, our our Lie algebra of symmetries. So we ask for a C star inside this group acting on our Lie algebra, where Q is of weight 1. Then the twisted field theory. Rho of T times Q, is that what that notation means? Um, uh, uh, I mean the action of this group on this Lie algebra however we want to describe it. Oh, okay. The twisted field theory is defined as follows. So basically, we're going to take some kind of invariance for this group. We, we assume acts and everything. I mean, Q, gender by Q and C star. So we choose a parameter of cohomological degree 1, and which is fermionic. So maybe I'm giving too many details, but anyway. So we choose such a parameter. Now, this parameter is, is even. So, then we take the DGLA. DGLA acts by preserving the fermionic degree? Yes. Um, or rather, this, this is also the odd pieces of this change the fermionic degree, and the even pieces preserve the degree. So was there another question? Yes. Yeah. So this is just some trick to get rid of this annoying z, z over 2 grading. We take, we adjoin this formal parameter, and the differential, Q, then I take the invariance for C star. Um, so if you, if you work out what's going on, this just, just has the effect of 
doing what we did a second ago, but modifying the grading so that it is Z graded. This. So we basically. Exactly. Exactly. So. Uh, and then variance means. Uh, oh, so this C C star. There. Where do you apply it to the L? Yeah, exactly to the L. To this, this whole cochain complex. We just take the invariance of this cochain complex. Uh, and that's also <coughs> part of that correct cohomology. You have to pass the. Lee invariant forms to make this thing have square zero, right? Um, well, in this case, no, but it's, it's kind of along those lines. Um, so we should think of this, well, we should think we have, we have an action of, a, of some supergroup whose even part is C star and whose odd part. It's a supergroup. Yeah, the even part is C star and the odd part is this span by Q. Oh. And then we're taking some kind of Tate. We're taking some kind of localized invariance for that supergroup. So, so I mean, this, this parameter S sound, this is C star X on S. Oh, yes. So S is weight minus 1 on our C star. Thank you. Forgot about that. Oh. Um, I, should, should I just stick to these two boards, Dennis? Or? Okay, so, so after all this kind of formal rigmarole, we can... Uh, I know Wit is a genius, but how does somebody think of something? Like that? What does it mean? Oh, it's just the localized... I mean, Witten didn't write it down like this, actually. He wrote, some, he wrote something even stranger, but... Okay. <laughs> no, 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 I mean... You're illuminating that. I mean, he, in the physics literature, they normally emphasize the Lorentz group, and you're changing the action of the Lorentz group. But I don't think the Lorentz group is so important, so I don't want to emphasize that point. Okay. Um, well, if you're coming over, I can. Great. So, so finally, we can say. What are these twisted field theories? So, uh, the twisted n equals one supersymmetric gauge theory on C two. Well, if you remember last time, I introduced the notion of cotangent theory. So any time you can write down some, any moduli space, we can construct a field theory called the cotangent theory. This is the cotangent theory for the moduli of holomorphic T bundles on C2 <coughs> for n equals 2. Are you doing Russian English now? Pardon? Is the cotangent theory? Yeah, it's too many time. Oh, that meant something different. Okay. <laughs> too, many, too much time talking to Russians. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, what to say? So the last time we explained a, f a field theory is some sheaf of Lie algebras corresponding to a, some moduli problem. And we can construct a field theory as a cotangent theory to any moduli problem. This gives a slick way to construct many field theories. So the n equals 2 theory, it's also <coughs> cotangent theory moduli of 
G bundles with a holomorphic section of the adjoint bundle of the algebras. So is that part of a sense? The moduli space of G bundles with um, with a section phi holomorphic section of the adjoint bundle of Lie algebras. I mean this is a phrase added to the first sense. Yes, two. I.e. sort of like cotangent theory. Yeah, and so equals two theory okay. is the sorry. <laughs> Um, the, well, in the dimension of W is one, they're all conjugate. This is an excellent point. Let me, I should have clarified this first. Um, let, me, let me come back to this in a second. Um, I'm sorry, I'm reduced to sorry. getting English correct, so I, and then I can at least understand it. I, I will try to write full sentences. There's a full stop here. Well, no, but, <laughs> and then is this a sentence? N equals two is the uh, twisted n equals two. That so yeah. Uh, is the cotangent theory with n equals two? That so the twisted n equals two supersymmetric gauge theory. So take the sentence, put two there. Is n equals two. Is is this okay. So here, we, all we're doing is we're just changing the moduli space. The twisted n equals two supersymmetric gauge theory on C2. Yes. Is the cotangent yes. theory two with a section or something. Yeah, exactly. And so for n equals four. Oh, OK, you're giving three statements. Yes. Okay. We find. Oh, I for n equals, oh, so for n equals one is that, for n equals two is that. Yeah. Two, well. Of course, these are all derived. Moduli of Higgs bundles. On CT. Um, so maybe I'll explain what a Higgs bundle is, and then I'll answer Hero's question. So recall, um, a Higgs bundle is a holomorphic G bundle with phi This is on any on any complex manifold with an adjoint valued section of the cotangent bundle tensor the Lie algebra section of cotangent bundle tensor adjoint bundle sorry such that um, phi brackets phi is equal to zero and this is in h zero x wedge two. Or GP. I know what GP is. So this is the adjoint bundle of Lie algebras. So see the adjoint bundle of Lie algebras. Oh, the adjoint bundle. Right. Was it, I mean, I mean, yesterday it's, I think you explained that you had to find the. First of all, you had to choose a global section, and then you take the. Okay, so he, he so the, the question is, um, uh, well, yesterday we were, the question is, well, yesterday we were discussing perturbative field theory, and here we're just writing on these moduli spaces. Well, I'm, I'm just kind of 
if you, if you look at the formal neighborhood near a given G bundle, you find the n, e n equals 1 theory. What to say? I mean, just look at the formal neighborhood of the trivial bundle for simplicity in all of these spaces. We, well, what, what you'd like to do, I mean, there's some. The reason I explained it like this yesterday is that it's much easier to say what the perturbative definition is than to really say what happens if you do it globally in the moduli space. But what you'd like to do is, uh, uh, you know, near every point in the moduli space, we have some perturbative field theory, and then we should glue them all together. Yeah, th these are global statements. Um, so maybe I should answer Hero's question. Then. Okay. So what are we twisting by? <coughs> so I didn't make this point clear before. So for the n equals 1, So, so all of all of what I wrote is about what I call a, a minimal twist. I choose Q in spinners. S plus tensor W, and I assume that it's a decomposable tensor. So that it's in the lowest possible, it's the least generic type of thing. Um, and all such keys are conjugate, so they give the same, the same kind of field theory. That word means uh, pure. I mean, it means it's, a, it's an element of the tensor product, which is one term like that. That's yeah. Yeah. Um, Right, that would that would that would amount to changing the z grading on all of these things by like move by changing what z grading this phi is in here or similarly there. So this is you know some convenient one where it's nice. Yeah, it, it shifts various pieces. Um, the re which representation? The, of the super group? No. So I'll explain this. I should ex explain this point. So what happens is, if I choose some element of S plus, the stabilizer is SU2. So choosing an element of S plus, which is what I'm twisting by, breaks the symmetry from SO4 to SU2. That's why we find the complex thing. So it'll be a unitary representation of the stabilizer of this element, but not of the whole. So, <coughs> so, so can I ask you about this? Uh -huh. so this? This is a theorem about classical field theories. Yes. Right, you're, and they're interpreting uh, uh, the first statement says you're interpreting this complicated definition in terms of something more uh, realizable, I mean, something more familiar, which is exactly. the deformation theory of holomorphic t -bundles. Exactly, yeah. And then can we assume that you're later going to show that these are, these are quantum field theories Yes, too? yes. And then a third question then. Uh, so then, whenever you write down something like this and then you prove it's a quantum field theory with your definition, 
these theories would be recognized by the physicists. I mean, they would, you're using kind of their language. Yeah. And then you would be mathematically proving that the perturbative quantum the field theory exists but mathematically. Or at least this part if, of it. If you do the quantum theory. Yeah, exactly. So, um, exactly. Because of course, what, what, what I'm really aiming at is to try to do some computations in the quantum theory, which I'm hoping to explain on Friday some computations of what the factorization algebra is. But yes, so ha if you're wa wondering how does this relate to the original physical theory, well, um, what we did was we took the original physical theory and deformed it by adding on a differential. So it turns out that there's a spectral sequence. Any, any thing you compute with the original, there's a spectral sequence starting with, say, anything you can be in the original f physical field theory converging to this one. So this twisted theory computes like a part of the physical theory. Yeah. And um, maybe, maybe another, another reason why I think this is a good thing to know, is that it's really, really hard to rewrite down even the, the n equals 4 supersymmetric gauge theory, even classically. It's kind of, you know, there's how many spinners? Six spinners, some number of scalar fields, all arranged in some, with some complicated representations of various things. But you know, what I like to do when I'm trying to read the physics literature is anytime they say n equals 4 supersymmetric theory, I say cross it out and replace it with pig's bundles. And you can. And many things become clear, I think, at least to me. So. Is there any twisted n is equal to 3 supersymmetric gauge theory on the CD? So what, what you find, so there's some kind of procedure to you write down n equals 1, you add more stuff, you write down n equals 2, so on, you write down n equals 3. But if you write down the n equals 3 theory, it automatically has n equals 4 supersymmetry. So that's why they call it the n equals 4 theory. And if you write down the n equals 5 theory, um, it, has some, it has some particles of spins the physicists don't like. OK, so, so you might ask with all, all of this stuff is, why did we find Uh, holomorphic things when we twist it. <laughs> um, well, the answer is, well, let's look at the n equals 1 case for simplicity. So we have some Q in S plus, and we've deformed our theory by, roughly speaking, by adding Q to the differential. Again, said more precisely what we were actually what we were doing, but this is essentially what we're doing. That now you can ask, what, what happens to this supersymmetry once I do this? And we also change C grading. Well, this implies that the differential, the differential graded Lie algebra, which looks like S minus, degree minus 1, this guy acts on the twisted theory. So this is just a a totally general thing about homological algebra. Whenever I have uh, 
weighted Lie algebra acting on something. So, so let's compute the cohomology. Let's, let's see what this tells us about the twisted theory. So, um, well, in the twisted theory, if we translate in the direction let's see what to say if we translate right uh, translation by this subspace is homotopically trivial. Right, so I have this complex vector space of complexified translations. And if I take an element of this subspace, which is the image of Q, that will act in a homotopically trivial way on my theory. Um, now, this is OR4 tensor C, and we're just giving a two-dimensional subspace, complex subspace in it. Well, it turns out that this subspace is isotropic for the pairing here. So this subspace gives a complex structure on OR4. So OR4 has a complex structure where the 0, 1 part is Q tensor S minus inside of complexified O4. So what we see with this complex structure Um, acting by d by dz bar acts trivially homotopically on our, on our theory. Therefore, it's, this is what it means to be holomorphic. So from this, we can also see what does it mean to, for, for, a, for a twist to be topological? That's simply the statement that every translation is in the image of Q. Um, and we see clearly that for the n equals 1 theory, that's not possible because this is just two-dimensional. This is four-dimensional. With more supersymmetry, it is possible to form topological twists. Take a smooth four manifold. The Durand complex is sort of an example of n equals one supersymmetry. So why can't you use this to put a complex structure on it? The Durand. How do you mean? Uh, I mean, I think of that as more like a supersymmetric quantum mechanics mapping to that four manifold, right. rather than if yeah, like, like Witten's paper on Morse theory. Yeah, exactly. So that's not. Yeah, it's a bit different. Code. Well, this is more about um, field theory on that four manifold. On the four manifold. So maps from the four manifold to something, which in this ah, case is BG. Okay. As the domain. Yeah. Okay. okay. So similarly, uh, 
topological twist is one where um, if the image of Q is all of this space, this vector space of translations. So the n equals 2 and n equals 4 theories admit topological twists. So this is just some linear algebra of these super translationally algebras. So you can just write down elements, write down sufficiently nice cues. You can arrange for them to be surjective onto space of translations. So what I'd like to do is to just describe that That this this is a definition. This one. The topological twist is one where the image of Q is all of the space of translation. The definition. Of definition. All the topological twist, the twist where that's true. Yes, okay. and it's it's reasonable because. Okay. Well. So what's the word similarly for? Well, because here we were talking about holomorphic. Oh. Maybe I need some lessons in. Grammar, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'd, I'd like to describe some uh, topological twists of n equals 4 uh, supersymmetric gauge theory. Um, and again, I think this, this is just for general culture. So Capucin and Witten wrote this paper talking about the Langlands conjectures in terms of the geometric Langlands program in terms of supersymmetric gauge theory, they said there was a P1 of topological field theories in four dimensions. So I just like to write them down at the classical level because they're, they're pretty easy to describe. Can I ask one question? Yeah. I mean, in which sense, it is a theorem. Do you say if I have, if I start with a supersymmetric field theory, the, I mean, uh, and so I mean, we have some of seen we can make this precise using well, this So is this a precise theorem in the best Yes, it's, there, there, there are definitions in the physics literature. I mean, it's not entirely obvious all definitions are the same, but I chose one of them. Then I apply this twist. If it exists, then? No, 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 no. This is a classical. N equals 4 supersymmetric gauge theory it exists at the classical level. To write down a classical field theory is just linear algebra. Physicists can do this. They can do many things. but. So there, there is a definition of n equals 4 gauge theory at the classical level. No. Well, I mean, what's the difference? I mean, the one is the characterization of properties. The other one is some of the, the assertion that exists something that satisfies the No, they, they just write it down. Ah. So it, it, they write it down, and it's complicated. And then I, you, you start with that, and then you apply you this. The, the 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 yeah, exactly. I mean, it's pretty complicated. It's, it involves twister space, the, the definition I, the version I used. So is it a reference? Um, I mean, there's lots of physics references. Oh, but I, 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 I wrote a paper about all, all of this stuff for Dennis's birthday conference, explaining the twister space point of view on it. So, and I give references to physics literature. Um, okay, so we see that the n equals 4 gauge theory, where we've minimally twisted, on a complex surface, so 
Yeah. I have a question. So, when you say minimally twisted in n equals 1, you said that it was still going to be, oh, it's going to be holomorphic? Yes. But will minimally twisted already be topological in n equals 2 and 4? No, because. Um, Do something silly as yeah, so I've d with the higher ones, I chose a decomposable tensor. So now I just write down the same complex tensor W star. Well, um, you know, this doesn't see most of the space W. So the image is, is two dimensional again. But if I chose but it's clear if I chose a non-decomposable tensor, a more generic one, then I could arrange so that the image of this map was everything. So okay, this minimally twisted guy on a complex surface. Um, so it's the cotangent theory. to the space of Higgs bundles for a group G. So this means that if I look at the whole space of solutions of equations in motion, And if we want to be really, really concrete and say, well, what's, I've written it down some more abstract notation, and what, what is the actual Lie algebra describing this space? If I chose some um, holomorphic G bundle, I, I set the, the Higgs field to be 0. the differential graded Lie algebra describing the field theory um, well It is the part describing deformations of a G bundle. Well, a Higgs bundle is something, a holomorphic adjoint valued one form. And there's also, if we take the correct derived moduli space of Higgs bundles, we have a adjoint value two form, but in some higher degree. So this, this part describes the Higgs bundle the moduli of Higgs, Higgs bundles. And the, the other line will be the cotangent direction. And that will be, again, the same kind of thing. So, let's see. So I want to write down a two-parameter two deformation of this big Lie algebra. And this will be the two-parameter deformation corresponding to the, the capustin witten P1 once I divide by C star. So the two parameters are S and T. Yeah. 
gives two parameter deformation of this classical field theory. And it's the and this corresponds to that. As I said, the Kapusin Witten P1 of twists. Okay, but maybe the last thing I'd like to say before I stop and next time we'll do some computations with this stuff. What's the mark between the S and the D? On the identity? Oh, identity. Yes. So how do we geometrically interpret this two parameter family? Well, When s is equal to 0, all we're doing is adding on the Duram differential up here. So that's the well-known deformation of Higgs bundles into local systems. T star minus 1. This deforms to Um, when, when t is equal to 0, if you think what we're doing, well, we're going to use a, a, a property of the space of Higgs bundles. The, the moduli space of Higgs bundles is itself symplectic. So the cotangent bundle is, is isomorphic to the tangent bundle of it with a shift. And then you know, for the algebra geometric experts in the audience, the shift to tangent bundle deforms to the, what's called the Duram stack. Basically, functions on the shifted tangent bundle are forms, because I take the exterior algebra of the dual, and then I can deform it by adding, adding on the Duram differential. So, From this, you see that this. I'll say this briefly, and I'll stop. We have this P1 of possible twists, and what the moduli space looks like, the moduli space of solutions of the equations of motion, is at one point, And at another point, we find the Duram stack of the space of Higgs bundles. But generically, we find the Duram stack of the space of local systems with a certain symplectic form. Uh, the LOCG up there, what does that mean? Uh, local systems. Oh, local systems. Okay. And that's the same thing here. They're all local systems, you said. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, okay. So I don't know if this, this description was helpful, but I, I certainly find Kabuzin Witten's paper hard, and maybe this, if you're interested in this stuff. And Next time, I'll try to talk a little bit about what you see at the quantum level when you quantize these theories. You see, you see some interesting things with the, the quantum loop group. Okay. Is that a picture of P1? Yes. 
You're thinking in the, um, uh, like, they're diffeomorphic. If you take stable Higgs bundles, they're diffeomorphic, but the complex structure changes. But the way, the way to think about it is, um, um, it's called this twister family. I think Delene introduced it. So you, you look for what's called a lambda connection. Instead of using the Durham differential, you use this operator. And when lambda is zero, this turns into Higgs bundles. And generically, it's, it's local systems. My second question, is there some inversion of some parameter you can do to see something about the language to move? I, I would love to say that, but I don't, have, I, I don't understand that.